So we're here at All Energies at the Green Energy Trading Stand, 2002, Wednesday, just after like 2022, after a three year hiatus. But I wanted to formally sort of introduce you. So I'll, I'll go to Caroline first. So I'm Caroline Bennett. Um, just started a new company, uh, sprung out of Green Energy Trading called Green Energy and Carbon Management. We're an um, energy and carbon uh, man management company. Uh, providing on the ground actionable advice to clients trying to reduce their energy consumption. And we do it because um, we love helping clients to actually get stuff done. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to for our planet. We, cer we certainly do. Um, Owen, your, your background? Yeah, uh, so I manage our uh, solar processing team. So that's primarily uh, STCs and LGCs as well as uh, Space heating and water heating for beaks, and, and also that's what we're going to be talking about. Books. Yes, uh, and also uh, dealing with onboarding new clients for uh, solar beaks. So with um, LGCs, it's pretty straightforward. So you know, you inst well when we're talking to clients, we try and do as much of it as possible. So from the system owner's point of view, all they need to do is uh, sign a basic agreement with us so that we can create the LGCs on their behalf. From the installer's point of view. We provide them with the power station accreditation form. It's not overwhelming. It's um, it's pretty on point. Once the system is accredited by the regulator, you create LGCs. We generally do that biannually, and we do that, or will be doing that every six months until 2030. But the thing with LGCs is that uh, it's based on the actual generational data. That's so it. we need to wait six months, get the yeah. data, do the creation. Wait six months, do the data, or get the data, do the creation. Uh, the biggest benefit and the difference between LGCs and Solar Beaks is that um, with a Solar Beak project, you're getting the benefit of the Beaks roughly 18 months post install. So, uh, you know, that's that's huge. We spend a lot of time up front um, at the start of a project educating both the end consumer and the installer because we need them both on board to understand the project as a whole on the site. So you're not just getting the beaks are 18 months, you're getting 10 years worth of beaks at 18 months, which is why wow. it's such a, a, a lucrative activity. But there are caveats, right? Of course. So you can only create beaks for behind the meter energy savings. Yes. So anything you export to the grid doesn't count. Um, and what, in order to measure that energy saving, we don't use generation data. We use uh, NIMI data. And we have to make a 12-month baseline model of what was normal operations on the site before and a 12-month uh, operating model of what is normal operations after the install. And the difference between the two mm. models is the savings. So it's a much more complicated calculation I method. Mean, it is, and it is, isn't it? And that's the thing, like, you're, you're asking, like, I'm not saying you're asking, but the, the average installer who is even doing this commercial system, maybe they've been doing 50, 60s, they've gone to 100, now they start edging over, they've, they've thought, oh, LGCs, but saying Beaks, which is a purely Victorian um, system. Um, trying to get their head around that. I mean, we get a lot of phone calls at Greenwood asking us to help them out, and I tend to say, we sort of know from our own perspective, but you're best to go and talk to you guys. So well, it's, then, it's an education process, isn't absolutely. it? It really is. And the, the method is engineering analysis, measurement and verification. And you actually have to understand all the concepts of energy going on in the site, everything that goes in and out of the, the measurement for the measurement boundary. And so it's not as simple as LGCs, and you do mm. need qualified people to do that analysis. And you do need to um, continue to talk to the site and make sure they don't change their site. Yeah, it's, because it's, I guess. Yeah. That, could, that could affect your. Um, your normals, right. so your normal before and your normal after. Say for instance they added a piece of equipment to their site after they added the solar, that's going to increase their energy consumption and it's going to look like there's less solar as a saving. What would you be your advice in regards to say coming along to you guys and what questions do they need to ask? What information do they need to have? Yeah, I guess firstly, just give us a shout. Um, we're happy to talk through the process with anyone. And it's very important that we're involved at as early a stage as possible. Uh, one of the things that's very important to remember is that um, a project is not eligible for VEATS unless it's had um, the approval from the regulator beforehand. 
So that involves us doing the modeling and uh, submitting a report to the regulator to get approval for the project. If the install has started before we've had the approval, it's not eligible for VEEKS. So, um, That's an important point. Yeah. Mm. Um, so come and talk to us early. early. And we also have a lot of uh, documentation and guidance that once we've talked you through it, we can provide so you can keep referring back. And we're available any time to have these conversations. If you have something that's slightly left the field, definitely talk to us as early as you can. Um, we can we can then advise you whether it will be an eligible project or not. Thanks very much, guys. That was great. Yeah, no worries. No, thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. Great to chat. <laughs>